Welcome to the program. Global megachurch Hillsong has been making unwanted headlines lately with allegations of misconduct as well as a criminal charge against its Australian founder, Brian Houston. You might have heard me ask the Prime Minister about him last night. They're old friends. One of the striking things about Hillsong has been its phenomenal growth, extending to congregations all over the world. The church, church owns property worth millions of dollars, much of it held at arm's length behind a series of linked charities and trusts. Tonight, we reveal how Hillsong has turned its popularity into an extensive international property portfolio. This report from Hagar Cohen with producers Alex McDonald and Ravine Hunjan. <laughs> I still am and still love the house of God. Hillsong Church has been touted as the biggest success story in modern Christianity, boasting more than 120 churches across 30 countries. You imagine if we can start raising a generation of people in countries like the Netherlands or Belgium or Germany or France or Russia or Kiev. But Hillsong is also in crisis. Its co-founder, Brian Houston, is defending a criminal charge that he concealed his father's alleged child sexual abuse. Last month, Brian Houston stepped down as the church's global leader when it was revealed he behaved inappropriately towards two women. Now 7.30 can reveal how Hillsong built a property empire by taking financial control of other churches in Australia and abroad. Right at the beginning we had to transfer all our funds to the Hillsong account. They controlled everything. This blending of business and religion creates a bunch of different conflicts of interests. One of the key objectives in the takeover by Hillsong is the acquisition of property and assets. In 2009, Brisbane's Garden City Christian Church was thriving. It was a welcoming church. People were lovely, good cross-section of people uh, from different nationalities. Later that year, Garden City began negotiating a merger with Hillsong, the nation's fastest growing Pentecostal church. The Garden City congregation voted overwhelmingly to install Hillsong founder Brian Houston as the senior pastor. We see Brian face up on the big screens and everyone was encouraged to consider that as being the best possible choice for the church going forward. Lance Goodall was a vocalist at the Old Garden City Church Choir. It was perplexing, to be honest with you, only because there had been no reference to, you know, would it be a good idea for Hillsong to be our hub or our family church? As well as the church itself, Garden City eventually transferred the ownership of more than a dozen Brisbane properties to a Hillsong charity. The million dollar question, why? And then of course, you know, that the pennies begin to drop. According to a church financial report, these assets were worth more than $12 million at the time. Elsewhere in Australia, in 2013 and 2014, two churches in Victoria decided to merge with Hillsong, with three properties transferred over. One of those properties was repurposed as a luxury rental. In 2015, this Gold Coast church also agreed to merge with Hillsong, transferring ownership and the mortgage on its church building. A year later, two churches in Darwin worth an estimated $2 million were transferred to Hillsong. In 2020, this church hall in WA worth an estimated $2.5 million was handed over to Hillsong with a small mortgage owing. As a registered charity, Hillsong doesn't have to pay taxes such as stamp duty as its property portfolio grows. It's not only properties that Hillsong acquired at no cost. 7.30 tracked down a church whose funds ended up under Hillsong's control. That's the baptism, actually. 
Jamie San Martin was an assistant pastor at the Botany Spanish Church in Sydney in the early 2000s. We were very friendly, yeah, very, very family. I ran a youth group there. The church grew, so, uh, you know, we had pastors, we had people there that you would describe as elders. Jamie's church began looking for a partner to help manage their growing congregation. He says he helped seal the agreement to partner with Hillsong. They'd expressed the desire to reach non-English speaking people. I think everybody was taken aback by Hillsong's growth. That was the main thing, that it was just growing so quick. And they would help us with the administration and I suppose the brotherly love in that sense. But the relationship turned out to be less about brotherly love and more about control, says Jamie. I felt that Hillsong was controlling us in terms of finances. We were having, starting to have real trouble accessing our own money. Uh, yeah, it's, it definitely there was exploitation there. Yeah. Jamie claims Hillsong began dipping into the church's savings to fund other projects. They were beginning to show signs of having a voracious appetite for money. Hillsong didn't show any interest in our church. They just simply weren't there. We, it was just, a, you know, in the end, a financial thing. Jamie's church eventually separated from Hillsong, but a decade later, the church was spreading its message to a whole new audience. It's very uncommon for a charity to grow as fast as Hillsong did in America. A private investigator in Texas, Barry Bowen, has been tracking Hillsong's real estate expansion across the United States. It owns at least three condominiums in New York City. It owns a three and a half million dollar home in California. When I searched in Arizona, I discovered 31 properties. If they don't sell any of those assets in the next year, it's expected to appreciate to over $40 million. In Australia, it's been harder to track Hillsong's total assets, and that's because Hillsong keeps its Australian assets separate from church activities, using a web of interlinked charities and trusts. This is something that the average person would never find. They would never look for these assets. They would never look for these companies. In Texas, Barry Bowen identified a similar strategy involving dozens of legal entities, which he argues creates a firewall between the church and its properties. If a victim sues the church, the church does not have major property assets. The church is limited in what it can pay for a judgment. This protects the church financially from large lawsuits. Wisdom builds the house. It's turbulent times for the Hillsong Church. Don't waste your The founder of the megachurch, Brian Houston, is facing misconduct allegations involving two women. That's what the Bible says. Since Brian Houston's resignation, nine Hillsong branches in the United States have broken away from the church he founded. And now for the first time, the lead pastors of another global offshoot have told 7.30 how they tried to sever ties from the Australian church. But in the end, they too handed over property and other assets to Hillsong. I felt like what Ukraine is feeling right now, it is an invasion from totally different country to get the assets of, the, um, of Ukraine into their own hands. What was the seed of taking Hillsong beyond the borders of Australia? Look, I think some of it was uh, just opportunity that came our way. Funnily enough, our first ever uh, overseas multi-site was in uh, Ukraine, in Kiev. So that was our start there. We 
were born and raised in the former Soviet Union, and uh, we did not have any church or Christian background. Thirty years ago, as the fledgling independent nation of Ukraine was emerging from the collapse of the Soviet Empire, Vera and Genia Kasevich started a small Pentecostal church in the capital, Kiev. We were first introduced to Christianity, it was through the music. We were translating Hillsong music into Russian language, we were actually recording albums. Hillsong Sydney sent an Australian pastor and some financial support to help them get established. We did not have a clue what we were doing. We were so young. All we knew that we truly believe in God and the church became our family. They named the churches they'd established in Kiev and Moscow Hillsong, but had no formal agreement with the Sydney-based church. When our church in Kiev started to grow, that's when Brian probably saw, oh, hold on a second, something is going on in Ukraine. He's drawn to success. He likes success. They claim Brian Houston began to challenge their independence and gave them an ultimatum. Stand aside or Hillsong would set up a rival church in Kiev. He started to put more pressure on uh, us that we should give away our rights and become Australian church. They cut our emails. They cut Australia, cut our database. I made the decision to resign and uh, basically took a lesser evil. Genia and Vera chose to walk away and start a new life in the United States. But before they left, they were asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which would prevent them from attending the churches they founded or communicate with anyone from those congregations. Completely cut our relationship with them, with every person. And listen, that was our life, only family. From their new home in the US state of Florida, Genia and Vera show 730 a document that required them to hand over property and $230,000 in cash to Hillsong. They also claim they received threatening emails while trying to convince US immigration to grant them visas to emigrate to America. In one email, Hillsong's general manager writes that he can make things very difficult for them with the American authorities. In another, Brian Houston warns that Vera and Genia have a lot to fear and that his general manager has a lot of useful information for the US Embassy about the former Hillsong Kiev pastors. Basically, he said, this church is mine. I will make your life small like this. I will squash yeah. it like this. Brian Houston told 7.30 in an email that this account is a complete fantasy and that he made no threats about the USA embassy. He says Hillsong has always invested in Hillsong Kiev financially. The Ukrainian pastors say they're finally free of Hillsong's control over their lives. We were quiet for eight full years, eight years. We were quiet because only six months ago she got a green card and now we are safe. We are not afraid to tell the truth and we want other people who were victims to have a voice. 7.30 sent questions to Hillsong Australia and its general manager, but we're yet to receive a response. The wait for the starting gun to be fired on the federal